On today's menu, we've got Memphis Soul Stew, or, or, or Stew, uh, the legendary King Curtis number, uh, Memphis musicians with a fantastically funky drum part by Gene Chrisman, who uh, was, was a hit maker drummer from back in the day. And uh, you can hear him on things like Dusty Springfield, Son of a Preacher Man, and some of the later uh, Elvis recordings as well, like In the Ghetto, uh, Suspicious Minds, and that, that kind of um, chintzy suit wearing Elvis stuff. Um, Memphis Soul Stew, Stew uh, has a devastatingly funky drum part and uh, there are two grooves here we're going to look at today and uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to explain a couple of different ways to approach learning a pattern. So let's have a look at the first groove. The first groove kicks off with a pistol shot fill at the beginning of the track, just after the bass comes in. It takes a couple of bars for it to settle down, but then we get this kind of chattery, funky snare drum thing happening that sounds like it might have been influenced by someone listening to the James Brown records that were around in the day, although the, uh, the end result is very different. It has a very different feel to the sort of Jabba Starks, uh, Clyde Stubblefield thing we're all uh, familiar with and know and love. After the groove has settled in, uh, we hear the bass on the one, the and of one, and then the and of three. But after we hear about half a pint of horns, um, the bass on the one is omitted, and then we just get bass on the and of one and the and of three, and it has a just a really good effect, in my opinion. Uh, so when you learn how to play this, uh, it'll give you a, a chance to play some grooves where you're not playing bass on the one, which is always a good thing. Let's start off by looking at what the hands are doing, and once we've got the hang of that, we can add the bass. The snare is playing this. One and two and a three e and a four and. Quite a lot of notes there. One and two and a three e and a four and. One and two and a three e and a four and. One and two and three e and four and one and two and three e and four. In the recording, there's an accent on the two and an accent on the and of four as well. Um, it's not like massive dynamic difference. So it'd be something like this: one and two and three e and four and one and two and three e and four. So it just um, lets those two accents pop out just a little bit. Now, let's add the hi-hat and we'll play it nice and slowly. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Notice that when I'm playing the E's and R's on the snare drum, uh, I'm effectively playing just single strokes between the hi-hat and the snare drum. One and two and three and four. Take your time to learn the pattern as slowly as you need to, to be able to repeat it uh, over and over and over again, but as accurately as possible. Don't worry about adding dynamics at this point. I would really try and program in the pattern before worrying about anything else. But at some point, after a certain amount of repetition, eventually you'll start feeling more relaxed and you can test yourself and see if you can play a little bit faster. One and at this point, you might want to add the dynamics. So just lay into the snare a little bit more on the two and on the and a four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Does that feel comfortable? Now slow yourself down again because you're going to add the bass drum. We're not going to have any problems adding the bass on the one and the and, I'm figuring. So let's try that first and we'll add the and of three later because that sort of happens in between all this fancy chattery stuff. So bass on one and the one and. One.
again, same thing, I'm going to repeat myself millions of times probably, but do it as many times as you need for your body to start feeling comfortable. Whenever we are learning new patterns, um, there's a certain tension in trying to get something right. And I recommend practicing for as long as it takes you to kind of feel that release of tension where your body has become familiar with the pattern you're playing and it kind of then relaxes. And you might not get to that in one practice session. Maybe you have to play this every day for a week before that really starts to settle in. Take your time with it. It's, it's okay. Everything takes time. Once we got comfortable with the bass on the one and the and of one, uh, we can add the bass on the and of three. And again, that's happening in between all this chattery stuff, so you may even want to slow down some more. Now, uh, if you feel that you're um, inclined to be cautious at this stage, maybe you can even drop the bass on the one and the and and just focus on getting that and of three in. So you could start off doing something like this. One and two and three and four. Ooh, I think I messed that up. Let's try again. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Okay, see, I'm finding that tricky now because I've kind of got this in muscle memory and breaking it down is weird. But I'm going to put the one and the and back in. Again, keeping a very slow tempo. One and two and three. Okay? It's funny how after you've practiced something for a certain amount of time, when you have to step back and slow it down again, your brain uh, can melt down on occasion. Once you feel comfortable playing the groove as I explained it with the bass on the one, the and of one, and the and of three, you can then learn how to play without the bass on the one. It's a useful thing to be able to do because we get really habituated to playing bass on the one all the time, but there are lots of uh, occasions when it feels really good to leave it out, sometimes just for an element of surprise or something like this particular groove where it gives you a little frisson of something unusual. Um, so let's try that one. One and two and three And that's pretty much it. I think I let an extra bass drum slip in there at some point. I'm sure you can forgive me. Um, but that's your, your groove there. And work, 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 practice and repeat until your body again feels nice and relaxed with it. And then you know that you know it. And obviously stick the track on and, and see if you can play along at the tempo of the song. We're going to approach learning the second groove a slightly different way. Instead of separating out the hands from the feet and learning those parts separately, uh, we're going to look at what the ride and bass drum are doing first, and then we're going to add the snare drum notes incrementally. The ride and bass drum is pretty simple. Eighth notes on the ride cymbal, and the bass drum is just going to play all the ands, so no bass on the one. one. The snare part sounds like this. I'm going to play as softly as I can for a rock and roll drummer, so hopefully you can hear me counting. One and two and a three e and a four and a one and two and a three e and a four. A one and two and a three e and a four. A one and two and a three e and a four. A one and two and a three e and a four. A one and two and a three e and a four. When you play it, you're going to end up with a little bit of an accent on the two. Everything else is fairly even, but again, there's not a massive dynamic difference between the regular notes and the accented notes. So let's have a go at this again. We're going to add incrementally. So first, we're going to add the snare on the one. Once I've played that a couple of times, I'm going to add the snare on the two and then each note in turn. Now, I'm going to demonstrate this and move through the stages pretty quickly. When you're practicing this, it might take you a lot longer, but don't worry about that. Uh, I always feel concerned that people expect to pick things up very quickly, but definitely in my experience, and I might be a bit dense, of course, but it takes me loads of repetitions to get an unfamiliar pattern to sort of uh, take up residence in my body and my brain, if you like. So here we go. I'm going to start off just with the ride and the bass drum, and then I'm going to add 
the snare drum notes one at a time. And this is uh, one way that I recommend you learning this. There are, you know, you could go about this by just doing the hands separately to the feet again, as I did with the first groove. And there's, there's a couple of other methods as well that are worth exploring. But let's try this one. I find that to be a really useful method for learning any patterns that some element of it I can get going straight away and then I just add the complicated bit one little bit at a time. Once you can play uh, groove number one and groove number two comfortably then obviously put the track on and practice playing along and remember that there might be a little bit of adjustment if you've practiced without playing along to the tune when you stick the music on in your ears you're going to have to adjust again and get used to it. So if you feel like things have deteriorated a little bit, even though you might have mastered the groove without the music, don't worry about it. Stick the track on repeat and keep playing until it settles in. That's Memphis Soul Stew. I hope you enjoyed learning this groove and I hope you spend some time playing along to the record because that's the way to really get into the feel of the thing. Meanwhile, if you've got any suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments section and please hit the subscribe button if you'd like to be notified of future videos. Now, I wonder what's for dessert?